guys so today I am testing out some wig making startups um, I'm gonna be dying wool today for making into a wig uh, it's actually gonna be for one of my monster high doll customizations but I figure this will give me good practice for making the doll for my resin girl uh, so to start out what I've done so far is I've taken the wool as I got it from the store as you can see here there's still lots left and what you see here was only an ounce, which just shocks the hell out of me. But I found out that we have a store that sells wool like this. And so I grabbed some about a week or so ago. So I trimmed it off into a little bit longer than the length that I want because I have the elastics up there because I want to hold the pieces together, hopefully, while they're dying. And so I separated it into little set so far. This one I actually, I don't know if you can really tell, ran my hair straightener over just quickly just because I wanted to see how it would flatten out compared. Um, obviously it would be done in smaller portions when doing the wefts up, but I just wanted to test it for now. So I'm going to take these and get the die set up and I'll show you what I'm using today and I'll be right back. All right, so we're now in the kitchen. <laughs> I have got my dye pot set up and bowl for soaking the hair and afterwards giving it a bit of a rinse to get any excess color out. I'm going to be using the uh, Wilton's. I don't know if you can really see that. Not really. Uh, but it's Wilton's icing color. There we go. Blue and green. Uh, I'm gonna be doing two separate batches, uh, so a few of the strands, or a few of the chunks, I guess, will be blue, a few will be green, because I want both colors in this girl's hair. Uh, after watching a lot of videos, really awesome videos, uh, which I will link down below, um, I've been watching to, to get an idea how to do this. I do need to add vinegar, I've got some vinegar here, and pretty much the ratio, I guess, doesn't really matter, but my plan is to do one tablespoon per cup of water. Since I'm not dying too, too much, I'm not sure how much water I'm going to use, but obviously I need to have enough to fully soak everything. And right now I need to get these set up in some water, because I need to soak first so that way the dye takes to them properly, you know, get any speckling, things like that going on. So I'm going to get that set up, let them soak for a while while I get the dye bath set up. And I will be back to show you how things go. So I've got the wool soaking. It's not fully soaked yet. But while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to get the dye into the pot. I've got about 10 cups of water and 10 tablespoons of the white vinegar mixed in. Uh, ratio is up to you. I just wanted to make sure it's deep enough as it's quite a wide pot. Uh, so I'm going to get that mixed in and get it to a simmer. Uh, just before I do that though, um, I just wanted to show for anybody who's watched my last video, uh, dyeing my resin soul fay, which I'll link, uh, you'll notice that this time I haven't bothered covering everything. Didn't really get any dispersing from that one except the one place I didn't cover, which I'll show you. I apologize for the dirtiness. The top of the range somehow got all the splatter. Luckily, it looks like most of it will wipe off, so I'll clean that later. But just wanted to show that. Don't don't forget about the top of the range if you if you do any of these projects. <laughs> Cover that up. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna get the dye into the bath, and I'll show you that in just a moment, and I'll be back. All right, so I've got quite a bit of dye in there. See, it's a nice blue, some of it sticking to the bottom, but that'll work up once it boils. I'm um, using another one of the bamboo sticks because I have a lot of them, so I figured why not. You can see some of it's stuck to it, but that's okay. It's a nice, nice blue. I may add a little bit more because I want it nice, nice and dark. Um, I'm not sure how this will spread out through the yarn, but luckily I can always re-dye if it needs to. And I just wanted to give a little shout out to the 
tutorials that I've been following for this project is from Chemnitz, which I will link. Uh, absolutely great source for those who want to dye wool or yarn in its form. Uh, she's, she's absolutely great, shows lots of different options for dyeing with food coloring, uh, the Wilton's food coloring and normal drop food coloring and different types of things. Uh, my focus is out right now. There we go. Uh, so these have to soak for a little bit longer just to get nice uniform wet because I want everything to wick through properly. But I'm only going to be doing half in the blue, half in the green. So for the green, I'll probably skip ahead a bit because it's the same process, just setting up the dye bath. And that way the rest of these can soak while I'm dyeing the first set. But I'm going to get the dye bath to a simmer. And hopefully things go well, so I will be back again. Alright, so I've got things at a pretty good boil. I'm not turning it up quite as hot as I would for the dye bath for the resin, but it is rolling pretty good. So I've got the wool out of the water, wrang it out a bit so it's not completely sopping wet, and we're just gonna toss it in and hope things turn out. Ooh, you can see the blue starting to soak up already. I'm just gonna push it down a little bit. Now one thing you want to make sure here is to not agitate it too much more than the water is going to be, otherwise you're going to end up with just a big pile of mess. And I can see it picking up some of the purples already. Oh, steam's kind of in my way. But hopefully, if I let it sit here long enough, it'll become a nice, nice dark blue. So we're just going to let that sit and simmer and soak until the dye bath is pretty clear. So once that is ready to go, I will come back and show you the results. Alright, so I've had the yarn, I'm sorry, the wool in the dye bath for a good 10-15 minutes now. It is coming out a very nice dark blue. It's hard to tell from here, but the dye bath has lightened pretty considerably. Uh, so I think I'm going to turn off the heat here shortly. Let everything cool, that way I can get the wool out without burning myself. And hopefully this process hasn't messed up my pieces too, too much, but that will hopefully be fixable. So I'm going to turn the heat off, and we'll come back when things are cooled. Alright, so I've pulled out the pieces of wool. Fortunately, they tangled with one another, so I'm going to cut them apart, but that's okay. Hopefully, they'll still hold some of the length that they originally had. So I've got them in some cool water. I've actually put them in the bowl that I had them soaking in previously and took out the other pieces since they're getting dyed next. And what I'm going to do right now, you can see not much of the dye is coming out in the water, so that's good. But I'm going to give them a very light washing with some of my... Greenworks soap. It's a very, very light, low movement of the water because, again, I don't want them to completely knot up any more than they already have a little bit. Uh, so, I'm going to give them a quick scrub, quotation on the scrub, and rinse them off and hang them to dry. Um, so, I'm going to give them a quick wash now, though, and I will come back to show you if there's any difference, and then we'll set up for drying. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so did a little wash and rinsed, and basically the idea was to make sure that you get the water clear, which as you can see, it is nice and clear. So these have dyed a very nice blue, which I am very excited about. So I'm going to have to rig something up to get them, let them hang dry, at least for tonight. Hopefully somewhere somewhat near one of the heaters in the rooms, that way they'll dry a little bit quicker. But I'd say, as long as everything dries well, and I can get these combed out a little bit, or well, smoothed out a little bit, because I don't want to completely pull things out, that this one was at a success. I am going to do the green one next. So I will show you a little bit of that tied into this video, but not the prep work and everything, as it's the same as doing the blue. We'll just be adding the green 
food coloring instead. So I'm going to get these rigged up dry and get dyeing the ones green, and I'll be back to show you them. Alright, so I already went ahead and uh, rinsed and washed the set of, of the wool because that doesn't change. So the same sort of process. We do have a nice green. The water is pretty well clear after washing. So I am very happy with that. Uh, for this batch, I did do it a little bit differently. I only did seven cups of water, so seven tablespoons of vinegar, and a little bit less of the dye than I used for the first one. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's lightened up a lot from when I first put it in, even though I didn't show you, but it did lighten up a lot. So I'm going to take these and bring them out and hang them up. And I'll show you my nice little rig for hang drying, which I hope won't take too long. And yes, my cat says hi again. <laughs> so I will go set these up to dry and I will be back. Alright, so I've got both set, the blue and the green, hanging up to dry. You can see my little rig for drying is probably not the best, but it works. And yes, I have part of a tree in here for decoration. I've got newspaper and a towel that has been used for hair dye so many times it's, it doesn't matter. Set down. It is close to the heater, um, which I'm hoping once it comes on maybe it'll help speed up the drying. I've been careful not to put the newspaper and towel too close so it doesn't you know, start a fire. But here is the finished results drying. As you can see, some of the blue tangled up into itself. You did see that it was tangled to each other as well, which I had to cut, and it's still a little knotted. Um, the green, as you can tell, did not do that. That was my own error. Uh, when I took the handful of the ones that were going blue, I left them in a clump together and plopped them in the dye, so they just sort of boiled and rolled around into each other. Into each other. Um, but with the green, I took them individually and put them in so they didn't tangle up so note for myself for next time on the upside i wanted more green than blue in this wig so that's not a big deal but these are gonna have to dry probably for a day or two before i can do anything with them uh, so i may post wig progress with them i may not we will see uh, if you're interested in seeing any other progress that I'm not doing videos of, you can check out my Instagram, which I will add a link for, and I post all my, my doll projects there. So anyway, that I'd say is another successful experiment. Still a little bit to go to finish it, but I'm quite pleased with how everything turned out. Uh, so thank you so much for watching, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hey guys, I decided to wait to edit and upload until I finished the final steps. So I wanted to show you uh, how everything wrapped up. So as you can see from the pieces here, dyed and fully dry and loving the colors. Uh, so what I'm doing now is brushing them out and using a flat iron on them to make them all nice and, and smooth. I did brush out a few already to show you. Uh, so you know, I'm just using regular kind of hairbrush. The nice little rubber grips on them. I figured it'd be a little bit safer than using some of the the other brushes. I would pull out a lot more. Unfortunately, we did lose a lot of length, as you can see, the original, which I was expecting. Uh, I wasn't expecting to lose quite so much fullness to the strands, so that's a little upsetting. Uh, but I still think I have more than enough to do her wig, and realistically, a shorter wig on the Monster High doll doesn't bother me too much, as they're they're not that huge, so it'll sit. I think it'll sit okay. Uh, so these are the pieces that I've brushed out, and as you can see, compared to the original chunk, I guess at that point. <laughs> Uh, but I still do love the color, they're soft, and they're fluffy still, so I think they'll still work out okay. And I did take a couple with my flat iron, here to show you. Focus, there we go. 
all nice and smooth. Not as much of a shine as I hoped, but it is wool, so I don't expect to be quite as shiny as some of the other fiber choices out there. But they say they turned out okay. Uh, the length is a little wonky, but I can always give it a bit of a trim or something after I get the, the wig made. And I just wanted to show you out of these one, two, three, six that I've brushed out already, this is how much fiber has come loose. <laughs> Which is kind of sad <laughs> that you lose this much. But it is from choosing wool. I'm hoping maybe I can afford to get some alpaca locks or something now that I've, I've finished this sort of experiment to do my, my resin girls wig as I definitely need it a lot longer than this. And it will be dyed, um, a custom color, which, which I think I'll probably record the process for as well when I get there. But for now, for Monster High, it works out pretty well. And I'm sure I can find a use for this if nothing more than stuffing for something. Uh, but yeah, that is the end and phase of this project. So I'm going to finish brushing the rest of these out and running the flat iron through them. And hopefully this weekend I can get started on her wig. But yeah. Um, as, as usual, if there's any questions, let me know, and thank you so much for watching.